All right. Praise God. So, you know, this every month in our church, we'll take a team and teach. January and February, we really got in on discipleship. And I think the subject of discipleship is something we always have to go back to because that is, that is the ultimate goal. That's what God wants us to be. Followers of Jesus. And I said to you in the teaching, there is come and see, but that's how you come. You come and see in Christ, but come and see should come to come and die. So the question is that Christianity is not a cruise ship, it's a battleship. Yeah, Christianity is not a cruise ship, it's a battleship. So we're not just come to fellowship and feel nice. No, 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 no. We're calling to a warfare. We're calling to a warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds. This month is very... Let me just tell you something. If there's a month, you will not miss any Sundays this month. Because... Because... This month is about teaching you how to live a life that unbelievers will come to your God. Isaiah chapter 60 says something very powerful. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. The Bible says that Gentiles will come to your light. That's what the Bible promised. Gentiles is the metaphor of unbelievers. It says your life will be so powerful, people that don't know God will come to you. You know, um, I, I, I was going through a testimony today and one of our brothers had testified how they did a job for a certain governor and they refused to be paid for several months, maybe up to a year. And he'd affected him financially and it was really badging the partner and he says, please talk to the governor. And the person said, don't you understand? I've been calling and texting him and he has refused to respond to us. He has literally refused to respond to us. And so I can't do anything. During next level in one morning, I just gave a word of knowledge that, about their case. And I said, reach out to the person again. And they chose to reach out to the governor. And guess what happened? The governor just apologized immediately, said, I don't know why I didn't respond to you and pay them their money and all of those things. And the guy that was the other partner said, the guy that was the other partner said, this is what he said. He said, the Baba that told you that is very hot. Make sure you keep using him. And, and when he said that, he said, I had to tell him that it's not a Baba. Like it's not, Baba means a court master, a witch doctor, a herbalist, a sangoma. That's what it means. He said, it's not a sangoma, it's a pastor. He said, oh, then it's very, but this is the key thing. The key thing is this, that God wants to do things in your life that will literally change the face of your life forever. So will you believe God for that? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is the speaker. Yeah, you know, so praise the Lord. And just to let you know, next Sunday will be really special. We have, we're going to announce during the week what it's going to be like. So watch on your social media. We're doing some things. Then, of course, Mother's Day is coming up. And um, that'll be, Mother's Day is going to be beautiful. Shh, secret. Don't tell anyone. On Mother's Day, we're going to have like raffle drawers of like iPods, iPhones, all these kind of nice things. And it's going to be like some, a wheel then I'm not sure if it's all the models or single models, so there's going to be some raffle, and you just come and play a raffle and pick, and whatever you pick, you pick, you can win a pick a trip to Ghana, you can pick a trip, you know, something like that, you know, shh, don't tell. Because there'll be too many people in church, so shh, don't tell. So they can go around for everyone. Praise the Lord, shh, don't tell. Then the men are not, men are always saying, what about men? Shh, don't tell. So just us for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. All right. Okay, let's get into the word of God right away. So the first thing I want to talk about is overcoming discouragement. I mean, this just this is entry into my message. One of the things I had to learn very early was how to overcome discouragement. And the reason I'm saying so is that if you do not learn how to overcome discouragement, it will be a big challenge eventually. The question is not will you get discouraged? You will. So if you know you will get discouraged, you should be learning how to what? Overcome discouragement. So the question is that the, the question is that why did discouragement come? Lots of reasons. But the major some one reason I want to say is, is this: sometimes, and this is what you can control. Discouragement comes because we have expectations that are not realistic. That's something within your control. To you, your expectation looks perfectly normal. For example, I had someone that was, you know, it was October, and the person said, Father, I still believe I will marry this year. 
even though I don't have a boyfriend. And I heard the prayer and I said, why do you think you're putting God under pressure or you're putting yourself under pressure? Because this October, November, December, even I as a pastor, I'll be quite reluctant to conduct a wedding like that. Because you met in two months and you're getting married. That's challenging for me. I'm not saying that can happen, but it's just challenging. So sometimes people have expectations that could lead to discouragement. And you need to ask yourself, I'll give an example. So, I mean, you just, you just need to ask yourself, would my expectation lead me to discouragement? The second thing is this. So when you're discouraged, what do you do? I don't know what happened to the keyboard, you know. Yeah, yeah that's fine. The second thing about discouragement is this. When you're discouraged, what do you do? This is the way I handle discouragement. I ask myself, what am I learning? The reason why is that if I can learn something, it turns from being a pain to a lesson. Then I can embrace it. So let's say, let's say that you lost some money, you lost five million in the business. What did you learn? Let's say that you had a terrible time in your marriage and you felt discouraged. What did you learn? The second thing about discouragement is this. You know, so for example, in the country Nigeria right now, we're in a transition. But the question is that, what are you learning? Lessons makes pain bearable. Lessons makes pain bearable. Lessons makes pain bearable. If there's something you so you, you will hear someone says, ah, that happened, but don't worry, don't worry, I learned something. You know, because what you learned make the pain bearable. Then the third, so how do you handle discouragement? What am I learning? Some of you here, the most valuable lessons of your life came when you were very discouraged. Yes or no? Exactly. You learn something huge. But the second thing you want to do when you're discouraged is this, which is very powerful. And, 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 and if you read the Psalms of David, you would notice that most of the powerful revelation of David came in the down times. Because at down times, your spirit is still and quiet for you to hear what the Lord is saying. The second thing you have to do to, to the second thing is this about discouragement. How do you deal with it? Ask yourself. Am I judging too soon? Have you been discouraged about something that did not, that eventually changed, that changed eventually? If you did, yes, raise up your hands. Let me say that again. Have you been discouraged about something that eventually changed or did not matter eventually? Raise up your hands. All of you that are lying, that's not good. I'll give an example. How many of you had an extra semester, extra year, or extra years in school? And you thought that was the end of your world? Raise up your hands. Does this still matter? No. I, I, I had an extra semester. And it was through carelessness. And I remember saying to myself, Oh my God, oh my God. I was beating up myself. In fact, at some point, you know, my, my wife also had an extra semester. And, <laughs> you know, my wife had, had an extra semester. Maybe it was an extra year. And I remember that, but by that time we were already together. We're, we're, not, we're not together. Okay. No, 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 no. And I remember that she told me that she was, what, she, what my wife said. She was just discouraged about doing the extra year. She wanted to not quit school then go and start afresh somewhere else. That was the best solution she came forth with. She said, she said, no, 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 that's it. I'm just going to quit school and go and start somewhere else. I said, because of this one year. And the reason I'm saying so is that this is what makes discouragement worse. When you make decisions from a place of discouragement, most of the time you make bad decisions. But my wife is over there right now. If I ask her, what does that mean? It means nothing. There are things you're discouraged about right now. That means nothing. 
in the next five years, it will mean nothing. So, when you're discouraged, you need to ask yourself, you need to put it somewhere. Tell your partner to remind you. Tell your friend to remind you, I might judge you too soon. So, all your friends have cars and you don't have a car and you feel discouraged. Are you judging too soon? Or your friend have children and you don't have children. Are you discouraged? Are you not judging too soon? All your friends are dating and you are not dating. Are you judging too soon? Always ask yourself why you feel discouraged. Am I judging too soon? So the election did not go as you planned. Are you judging too soon? The question, because, because the question is this, are you judging too soon? If you saw Spiral, if you saw Spiral two years ago, you'd have said it was a classical failure in music. Is that not true, Spiral? Spiral, stand up. If, if you saw Spiral two years ago, you'd have said, this guy is a classical failure in music. What will they have? Oh, listen, they were judging too soon. Because by now, we'll not be singing will be here with my guy. Are you judging too soon? If you say, some of you say things like, hey, you, know, I'm, you know, I cannot be a good Christian leader, I cannot serve God. Are you judging too soon? Someone says, I can't make money. Are you judging too soon? What does someone like Obama think? His father is African. And you judge them at the age of 10? Are you judging too soon? When you think of Nigeria and discourage, are you judging too soon? Someone say, I'm not judging too soon. Sir. I'm not judging too soon. Are you sure? You think of Nigeria? Are you judging Nigeria too soon? See, let me tell you something. If you judge your marriage by the first two years of your marriage, you will have a terrible judgment. Because sometimes, those are the challenges. Because, the, oh my God, can I give revelation? Yes, sir. Human beings say day and night. Genesis 1, what does God say? The evening and the morning. God says night comes before day. It gets worse before it gets better. So in your business, are, are you not judging too soon? Yeah. You just started this business six months. Three months. Are you not judging too soon? Sometimes the problem people have in marriages is the fact that they're not patient. Because some of those issues will resolve themselves along the way. Are you not judging too soon? Let me write it down. When I'm discouraged, I need to ask myself, am I not judging too soon? Because God's delay does not mean God's denial. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. John chapter 5. I don't know what you're going through right now, but the question is this. I know there's a problem with the marriage, and there's a problem with your finances, and you're judging the future based on what does not exist. Are you not judging too soon? John chapter 5. So how do we break the patterns of stagnation? Let's look at what Jesus Christ said on stagnation. You need to help me with the timer because it kind of goes out and comes in. Then, you know, um, then I don't know where I am. Then it tells me I'm out of time. Then I'm like, God bless you. I will just keep preaching. Praise God. Hallelujah. John chapter 5. The background to this story is this. There was a pool in Bethesda. There's a pool, at Bethesda. There's a pool called Bethesda in Bethesda. And an angel will come and will trouble the water. And whosoever steps into the water will be healed. It was a place of divine encounter. So Jesus Christ walked in here and saw this man. And I want to talk about stagnation here. The reason why is that one of the challenges I see with Christians is that a lot of people are truly frustrated because, as, because they feel they are stuck in their finances. They think they are stuck in their marriage. They feel they are stuck in one area or the other. So what we want to do today is this. And this is what we want to do this throughout this month. If you are stuck, this is what you can do to experience quantum leaps this year. 
This will help you a lot if personally you feel you're stuck. Maybe you're stuck, you want to get married. It will help you a lot. Maybe in your career, you feel you're stuck. It will help you a lot. It will help you a lot in every area of life. John chapter 5. So the Bible says this in verse 3. A certain man, verse, um, verse 5, I've told an angel goes, verse 5 now. A certain man was at that pool where they used to get healed which had an infirmity of 30 and 8 years and jesus the bible says the man had a problem for 38 years remember the bible did not say the man was 38 years the age of this problem was an adult you think what i said the age if his problem was a child that was born the problem would be almost my age mates he was, the problem was not a child. It was not a teenager. He was there for 30 and 8 years. And let me warn you, there's something about being in a state for a long time. It can become your identity. So because you've struggled financially for a long time, you begin to say, I'm poor. Because you've struggled relationship for a long time, you begin to say, I'm not destined to win. Be careful when a state becomes your identity. Have you seen people that fail exams a lot and they say, I'm now a failure? Because when a state becomes your identity, your problem moves to the next level. And I'm saying so here because many of you, you've turned your state to identity. I understand you have problems smoking, but don't say I'm a smoke addict because you are now giving yourself a new identity. And the thing about identity is this. You will always act in line with the identity you think of yourself. Have you, have you seen a lady that was brought, brought up as a tomboy? When she was young, she would walk anyhow. And now she thinks, now she knows she's a lady. She'll find herself walking like this. You know, I say, no, 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 no. I'm a lady. Why? The reason why is that consistently we will act in line with the identity that we have. So the challenge with identity is this. Many of you, you went through a lot of challenges. You hustled all your life. But the problem is not the hustling. It's the fact that your identity is now a hustler. So even when there's prosperity, you don't see the prosperity. You must hustle. Many of you, you've been fighting all your life. You don't, there are people that fight all their life and don't know how to exist in time of peace. So when they get to a place of peace, they look for battle. When they don't find battle, they create one. The reason why is that their natural state is a fighting state. And the reason why is that because they've been brought up, they had to fight. And that's why, can I be honest with you, and this, don't say... And, you know, all these words you guys use in generation, his days, his that, his this, he's been, uh, what, they give you a lot of words, like, when you, judgmental, judgmental body shadowing, this and this, the <laughs> gaslighting, for example, when you see people that are short, they tend to be very aggressive, not all of them, not all of them, and the reason why is this, watch this now, watch this now, and the reason why is this, because people have tried to take advantage of them all their lives, they have to push themselves forward. So when they get to a place where no one is taking advantage of them, they still find themselves fighting. And you wonder, he's saying something to you. The same thing when you see girls on the big side. They always have this I don't care attitude. They, 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 they have this, some of them, not everyone, they have this... Um, shamelessness yeah shamelessness like you know because people have always spoken about maybe how they look and treat them a certain way when they just call you like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like like I, well i don't care and eventually they find someone that really loves them and the person says why are you like this but what i'm saying is that don't turn a state an event something that happened to you into identity because when it's who you are you will always go back to who you are when it's what you do you can stop what you do and that's the biggest problem with sexual orientation that's the biggest problem with sexual orientation because people have turned it into an identity 
and identity is difficult to change very difficult to change because people always find a way to return back to the identity glory to God so the Bible says this the Bible says this this is this is let's go to verse 6 and Jesus saw him lie down there this is a power of identity so the Bible says the man has been lying there for 38 years so in his identity I'm helpless I'm a victim I'm a nobody nobody's going to help me this is his identity so he's going to talk from a place of identity see what the Bible says here the Bible says this and Jesus saw him lie down there and he knew that he had been there for a long time and he said to him will thou be made where's my microphone where's my microphone give it to give it to the, the, sister Yinka sister Yinka if I ask you a simple question will you be made whole what your answer be yes I want to be made whole. simple yes I will give, give it to the lady behind you do, do you want some money what's your answer yes I do that's all give the next person this you do you want a husband? Yes, I do. Oh, that's all. But, but watch this. Once you have a wrong identity, you answer from your identity. Jesus Christ says, do you want to be made whole? Instead of the man to say, yes. Next thing, I have no man. You know why he said that? Because his identity was the identity of a victim. And the victim is always looking for someone to blame for where they are. He says, I have no man. He's always looking for someone to blame. The question, and, and this, listen to me. This is the reason why he has been here for such a long time. The reason why is that you can keep blaming, but blaming changes nothing. What do people blame? People blame event. It's not me, it's what happened. People blame themselves. People blame other people. People blame their parents. A lady was sharing with us in the, in the last service. She said, when I was young, because of how we financially struggled, I blamed my parents. And I asked her, you blame your parents because you couldn't afford great schools. He said, yes. You struggled to school. He said, yes. I said, what did that change? He said, it changed nothing. I said, you're doing well now financially. I said, what changed? He said, when I stopped blaming my parents and I took responsibility, everything changed. You know why your marriage is not working? Because you are blaming your someone. You know why your finances don't working? You are blaming someone. Some of you are blaming Nigeria. Some of you are blaming dollar. Some of you are blaming oil subsidy. Some of you are blaming pastor. What are you blaming? Why the relationship is not working? You say, so what? So it's a relationship. He said, is it's all these useless men, useless men, useless men, useless men. Blaming. Why are you not mind? He said, all these girls, all these girls, all these girls. Is he blaming somebody. But blame changes nothing. Why can't you pray? I was not raised up that way. You blame your background. People are always blaming something. They are always looking for something to blame. The question is this. Write it down. What do I blame? Write it somewhere. What do I blame? What or who do I blame? When you have your answer, let me know. Some of you blame your doctor. Some of you blame the church. Some of you blame this. Some of you blame social media. Some of you blame the president. Some of you blame liberal parties. Some of you blame APC. Some of you blame PDP. You're always blaming someone. You blame Canadian visa. You blame the embassy. You blame the ambassador. You blame the person that put it together. Who are you blaming? Some of you blame London. You blame Canada. You just blame places. When are you going to be honest with yourself and say that if anything will change, it's the man in the mirror that needs to change? What did you write down? What, what did you write? Tell me what you wrote down. What do you blame? Yeah, tell me what you wrote. You didn't write something? You will tell me what you wrote. Yeah. Or is it private? No, tell I me. actually always blame myself. You always blame yourself. Good. Give it to the next person. What did you write? What, did, what do you blame? What? You didn't write anything. Okay, what do, you, what, what, what do you blame? I blame my office. Your office. That's great. What do you blame? My parents. Your parents. Good. And what has that changed? Nothing. Nothing. When you blame your office, what has that changed? Give it to her. You blame your office. Yeah. Change. What has that changed? Didn't change anything. Change nothing. Change nothing. So this man said, so this man said to Jesus Christ, he says, I have no man. Just, you know, to, to let you know he was saying nonsense. Jesus did not even respond to what he said. 
Jesus just said in the next verse, take up your bed and walk. Why are people stuck? Because people refuse to take personal responsibility. That's why people are stuck. The number one reason people are stuck is because people refuse it. And this is the problem with Africa. Africa is looking for European and developed countries to help them. And as long as we keep looking into the Western world for help, we will not get help. People are stuck because they refuse to take personal responsibility. Can I say this to you here? Everybody, please pay attention. How come you find 12 players coached by the same player, by the same coach? One person does well. The remainder are irrelevant. The reason why is that it's not the coach. It's not even the skill. It's the personal responsibility of the each student. The same teacher teaches us everything in class. 50% fail, 50% pass. Because the ones that pass took personal responsibility. If you would join Next Level Prayer for one year, you will see it in your life. Someone says, you know, I'm not a prayer person. Listen to me. The reason why you're not a prayer person, you have not found what will make you pray. When you find what will make you pray, you will pray like, an, you will pray like a fish. You know fish? Uh, you, know, you just be praying. That's how you be praying. Glory to God. Someone says, you know, you know my background, I don't know how to pray. Blame me your background. But it's because you've not found the reason to pray. When you find the reason to pray, you will pray. Your business has not gone well. All you need is three days to settle it. You say that I have ulcer. Ah, more than ulcer is coming. You know, ulcer because you have food that you don't want. That you have food and you can eat, but you must eat on time. But when you don't have food at all, then the mother of ulcer will come. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've done everything. I've done everything. You know what I'm ready to do? I will say, take paper, write 10 things you have done. Most people cannot come up with five things. Yet, you've done everything to be married. Everything to be married. Ordinary three books on marriage, have you read? And yet, you have done everything to be married. Those are things you tell yourself to make yourself feel good. And see as if I'm doing something. When your good is not enough, you add your best. Taking responsibility. Taking what? Responsibility. Look at Genesis chapter, chapter 27 verse 40. This is very powerful. Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. This is very powerful. Why, why are people stagnated? Because they refuse to take responsibility. Can you help me with the timer again? The timer is off for some minutes now. They refuse to take responsibility. Oh, this is powerful. Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. Oh, this is good. The Bible says, this was Esau's prophecy. It said, by the sword you will live. You will serve your brother. Then it says, your life will be difficult. It was a curse. Then he put a curse there. He says this. He says, when you, sorry, when you have dominion, you will break the yoke of thy neck. Let's read the message translation. If it's possible, can you put this on the main screen if it's possible? You know, the message translation. This is very powerful. Have you seen it? Hey, see what it says. You will live far from east, the earth's bounty. It was a curse. Remote from the heavens to you. It says, conditions will not favor you. He says, when it bounty is here, you will be opposite it. He says, you will lead by sword, hand to mouth. But when will your change come? He said, you will serve your brother. He told him you will serve your brother. He said, but when you can't take it anymore, continue, sir. He said, you will break loose and free. The reason why your change has not come is that you can't take it. 
the reason why your change has not come is that you can't take it. When the push comes to the shelf, you will do what you have to do. Ah, yeah. Ah, ha, ah, ah. ha. You can't take it. Ah, ah. That's why sometimes pain is a good pusher. He said, when you come to the end of yourself, he said, you will break loose. The question is this. This is the question. Do you allow your pain to push you to action? Or you allow your pain to paralyze you? Because frustration can be a good thing if you can turn it into motivation. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Oh, somebody say Hallelujah. Let me say something that will very challenge you. What is taking personal responsibility? Understanding, this is personal responsibility. Understanding you don't get the life you want. You get the life you create. What is taking personal responsibility? Understanding you don't get the life you desire. You get the life you create. Somewhat around December... I called my wife. I said, "One press this year, I'm majorly the only speaker. I said, I would need to do some preparations. The reason why is that I can be in the house and I'm not available. I said, I can be in the house, but there's no much, I, this is, this, you know, there's no much entanglement and sharing and all of those kind of things. I said, just abandon me somewhere. Because the whole world is coming. They are coming from America, from Japan, from China. You saw them come. They, they've seen music and light everywhere. They came here for something else. I cannot afford to be careless. I must take personal responsibility. What does that entail? If I have to pray, I will pray. If I have to spend hours in fasting, I will fast. If I have to study, I will study. It's not because it's easy. It's what you have to do. Taking personal... Listen to me. Have you taken personal responsibility? Because in life, you never get what you desire. You get what you create. Are you here? This is very powerful. The difference... And please take note of this now. The difference in our lives... Is not capabilities. It's the ability to do what we are capable of. Wow. You can have a capability of 100 and live at 20 because that's, what you, that's where you've taken responsibility. So many of you think you're not talented. It's not true. It's the fact that you have not applied yourself to what you're meant to do. So in life, watch this now. In life, the difference is not capabilities. It's the ability to do what we are capable of. So I have capabilities. It makes no difference. Perf Listen, performance does not reflect potentials. Sometimes performance and potentials are not connected. Because some people that have the biggest potential cannot perform. Because to turn potential to performance takes responsibility. To turn potentials to performance takes responsibility. No, listen to me. I don't know anybody that was born prayerful. Everybody that prays learns how to pray. This generation of men that businessmen that cannot pray, he said, abnormally. They, when you get discouraged, church, you don't pray. Because prayerful people, there's some of a prayer that lifts the spirit. personal responsibility. Taking what? Personal responsibility. How long will you be at a finance of 10 million per year? Are you not tired? How long will you be struggling with pornography? Are you not tired? There must be a day you say, this is enough. You enter a place, all the guests say, hi, 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 hi. You've dated all of them. 
my ex, my ex, my ex, my ex, my ex, one person, 25 X. What is wrong with your body? Take responsibility. You keep saying that all oh, the boys that it are useless. Take responsibility. Why do you choose useless boys? Take responsibility. Why do you choose useless boys? You will now say there's something about me that makes me choose useless people. So it's not the people, it's me. The reason why is that until you take responsibility, you cannot change. And whatever you cannot accept, you cannot change. Whatever you deny, you cannot change. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. He said, uh, uh, my weight is our family problem. My brother, take responsibility for your weight. It's not family problem. It's eating problem. Right? Pizza. Uh, eh? Donut. Small chops. As you eat small chops now, all your body is chopping. It's falling off. You, you are having chops. <laughs> we can begin to cut lamb chops here, steak chops here. We can cut it from your body. responsibility uh, I'm not just saying I'm not naturally fine why did they have makeup to make up what is not there train yourself and take responsibility you see, whoever doesn't like me like this are you, queen, are you the queen of the coast praise God is, is your wife demanding financially or you are stingy take responsibility Even school fees, even school fees. Why? Take responsibility. You should pay school fees with joy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed today? You, you will see a single girl praying the next level. Father, Father, send me my husband. Yet your Instagram is closed. To who? Do you want to marry an angel? Take responsibility. Many of you run business here, yet you don't have a website. You are saying my business is slow. Lord, send me customers. You don't even have a digital identity. How will God bless you? Take responsibility. At 30, you don't have a savings of 100,000 naira. Okay, let's even leave the amount because we don't know the background. That can be a challenge. But shouldn't you have a savings account at the age of 30? Not is an operational savings account. You are single, you come to church now. As soon as church is over, bam, you carry your things and go. Go where? You will go and watch the STV and cry on the pillow. Why can't you be around where men are? So that they can even see the goodness of God. Praise God. Take responsibility. Why don't people take responsibility? Number one, religion. Nothing, I'm telling you something. This is the curse of religion. Because there's something about religion that tells you that don't do anything, no, God will do it. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. God does what we can do when you do what you when you do what you can do. What is a miracle? Doing what you can do so that God can do what you can't do. But you commit God by doing what you can do. Open the Instagram. Do what you can do. Approach people to buy your product. Do what you can do. Your mind is struggling. Approach your wife. How can we settle it? Do what you can do. So many is going on your finance. You and your wife, you get us together. Seven days, fasting and prayer. We are only eating fruit. Uh, someone just laughed. <laughs> fruit. Ah, because 
whatever you take your finances, you, you face it by force. And they said, no, 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 it's not up to that. It's not up to that. It's not up to that. The devil that took James is coming for Peter. What's taking responsibility? Doing what? Doing. What is wrong with you? You, you have charger for your phones. You don't have charger for your life. You have, you take responsibility for your phone not to die. Yet, you don't take responsibility for your life not to die. You don't take responsibility for your marriage not to die. Come on. And what kills it is all this terrible religious teaching in various religious houses, including some churches. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. God will do it. When you do what you can, God will do what you can't. Religion says, don't worry, God will do it. Christianity says, once you do what you can, God will do what you can't. The funding needs you to talk to people. Start talking. Uh, uh, someone says, uh, you know, in, in 2023, I want to grow my capacity. I look at my leadership. You think it's by growing. You will sign up and say, I want to be a cell leader. You will sign up. That's why we pray the prayer. Lord, show me where to make adjustment. Why is that prayer powerful? Because it's a prayer of responsibility. Because I'm the one that needs to make adjustments. Some of you, it's not as if you can't be married. It's the mount that's the problem. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Do you know how many graduates cannot use a computer to print their CV? And they're looking for girlfriend. If you cannot operate a computer, can you operate a woman? I'm telling you, you, you have no concern. You know, you just say, please let me go and face my life first. Take responsibility. Pray responsible prayers. Pray what? Responsible prayers. Glory to God. The second reason why people don't take responsibility is this. Oh, wow. Because of comfort zone. They love comfort zone. They don't want to step out. It's so nice. Let's watch church online. It's so nice. I, no, I, I don't like... Next several prayer is too early in the morning. How can you be praying at 6.30? I can pray at any time, but you pray at no time. From your philosophy, I will pray at any time. I will watch later. You watch at ne- never. Comfort zone. Oh, when will you become a cell leader? Um, next year. Why not now? Comfort zone. It's never comfortable to grow. But growth pays eventually. Many of you can do online courses. You are still waiting. By the grace of God, my books are coming out this year. Online courses here. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why is that it's not something I'm naturally used to, but I must step out of my comfort zone. If you keep doing what you like, you will end up where you don't like. If you keep doing what you like all the time, you will end up where you don't like. If you eat everything you like, you will not like yourself. If you eat everything you like, you will not like yourself. Taking personal responsibility. Let's read the last scripture. Are you here, somebody? Why don't people take responsibility? Some people say they are helpless. That is out of their control. Can I get my stuff? Yeah. They say, ah, yeah, yeah. help me.
I don't know if Prophet Tom is interested in. Are you interested in this? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. You need to turn it. This needs to, yeah, exactly. Okay, good. This why, please watch this. This is why some people don't take responsibility. They say, everything that is happening is not my fault. Can I keep myself? What can I do? So, you hear someone says, can I marry myself? Uh-uh. Can, I, they form, can I give myself? If I actually want to help me. You know, so there's that helplessness. In life, three things happen. Yeah, you can, you can go back. Does it need to hold it? You need to hold this. Okay, you can hold then. You can hold. Yeah, this life. This bag is life. Okay, can you see this or this? Is this blocking us? What? Let me help you. You can see. I take responsibility. I take responsibility to make sure that I teach well. Okay, yeah, come. Uh-huh. So when life comes, come, come, uh-huh. yeah, come, come. Yes, you see, life will always throw things at you you cannot determine. But there are three responses. Once it throws things at you the first time, First response, you can knock you out. And many of you, that's where you are. You have been knocked out by life. And you think the people that are standing, that things are not thrown at them. Things are thrown at them, but this is the difference. When it's thrown at them, throw it again. My God. When it's thrown at them, they have gloves. Throw. What? As you throw, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because you learn how to fight. The last category of people, when life throws things at them, they hug, they hug the problem. They hug it. They hug it. You, you know how they hug it? Um, the problem I have is that when I was eight, my father died. My, my father died. It, it's, it's come to identity, their story. You know, it, it was when I had the divorce. It was when I had the divorce. It was when I had the... The, the problem becomes that they hug it. Every time you see them, it's the same story. Do you know them? Even as they're in church today, it was my prophet that broke up with me four years ago. Four, it was in 2015, 2015, when I had that bad breakup. It was when I lost 10 million. What? They log it. You are not called to hug your problem. Life is a battle. But you are the winner. Life, show it at me. I give it to life. I give it to life. Who do you think I am? I am a victor, not a failure. Success, making progress. Hallelujah. In business, we win. In marriage, we win. In life, we win. In health, we win. You see, the chain is broken. Listen to me. Let life throw the cancer. I don't hug it. I'm a cancer patient. I mean, it's blood fallopian too. It's PCOS. What's, what nonsense is that? You say, doctor, say cancer. Come on, cancer. Come on, cancer. Who is afraid of cancer? Greater is he that is in me. That in, 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 uh, you're, not, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you're not get out. It's time to knock it out. It's time to knock it out. We are not here to settle. We are not here to give up. We are here to overtake. Either it's dollar or naira. APC labor or PDP. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Shout amen. Shout amen. Shout Listen. Life. Show your best. One thing I know. Greater is he that is in me. Than he is as the one. I may have losses. I may have heartbreak. I may fail an exam. I may get rejected. But one thing I know, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that work according to his purpose. I understand that the doctor says I can't have a child. 
I understand they say have peace your ass and this has been too much but this is what the Bible says he says with God all things are possible this is the victory that becomes the world even our faith stand on your feet let's pray oh glory to God